We got another video here by the Tokyo Real Estate Man. And we're just walking here in uh, Shibuya Shinsai. And I thought I could uh, do a video here. That's a nice Land Rover Defender right there. I thought I could do a little video here about the pros and cons of uh, living in Shibuya, Tokyo. Okay, so the pros is the people who live in Shibuya are the people who love action, who live city life, who uh, are workers, hustlers, salespeople. You know, you find some people that are indigenous to the neighborhoods and what have you, right? But a lot of people are here to to make it, you know, and they want they want the rush, you know, like a restaurant owner like him right here. Or any of these restaurant owners, man. Seven days a week. What? You know, 18 hours a day. That's pretty normal, man. So, here, people love the action. Lots of tourists come here. I guess not now. It's right in the heart of the corona time. But you can see people are here for, for drinks on a Sunday night. It's hopping. So, it's a place for action. And just like any other popular place, I guess it could be considered expensive. So if you're looking for a basic starter apartment here in Shinsen Shibuya, you're looking at probably on the low end $1,000 a month US dollars. On the high end, you can go from there. But a Tokyo apartment is hard to get. You're going to need a good rating, a good job. You're gonna need five, six grand in cash just to secure that apartment. So yeah, there's a minus. Uh, so Tokyo or Shibuya here, it's a really convenient place. A lot of companies are here with their offices and all kinds of fields. A lot of IT jobs are here, okay? So it's a great place to be, but there's also a lot of train lines to shoot out of here. So, if you are of the right skill set, it could be a great place. If you like fashion, city life, urban style, Shibuya is a great place. Okay, if you like nature, and the laid-back lifestyle is not a really great place to be. There's not much nature here. There you go, looking at some nature right there. Or you're not, you're not going to get too much of it here. Okay, some people might consider Shibuya in some areas. This is actually the dirty side. The other side of Shibuya Station where I live is the cleaner side. I happen to like both. I have my business over here. I have a few apartments over here which people like the young models who like to rent my apartment, they love the action. However, I'm very happy to walk to the other side of the highway to the nice quiet side of Shibuya. So, it can be both. But yeah, there's not much nature here. You know, it's nice. The other side of the, uh, of the highway here, 246, tends to be it's a little nicer, it's cleaner over there. Yeah, but this is ultimately, if you're going to be a person who likes to, uh, to chill and uh, take it easy and not work. You know, like, well, I work seven days a week. Like, I work every day. And I, like, I own businesses, so I don't, I don't work on a wage. So, you know, sometimes I work in for free. And sometimes I'm, I'm working for two or three thousand dollars a day so I mean that's just the kind of place it is that's where I love about it you know I love it it's a it's a very popular place for uh, for real estate you know which is why it's expensive but you know it's a great market for investment because there's a lot of people are drawn to here and they're the kind of hustlers and stuff like that and people that come up with the money so there's a very vibrant rental market here in Shibuya, 
and you're gonna pay more for the property because it's so in demand. It's the place Japanese people want to be. I mean, what I mean by Japanese people, Japanese people who want to do something in their life, be the hustlers, the money makers. Those kind of people are drawn here. And that is the best type of real estate investment to follow. Or sometimes you wanna maybe, you wanna go sometimes where those people are going. Let's say they have been priced out of Shibuya. Maybe they're going now to Sanginjaya. So yeah, but that's just that's not too far. It's just on the road. Okay, what else? I'm just kind of making this up. What about friends making friends and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, this is ultimately Japan, and you're gonna make more friends when you're bilingual. And uh, so, do I think Tokyo? It can be like a freezy place at times, just because like. Uh, People are like, the, the mannerism is, it's a big city mannerism. I generally don't disturb people unless, okay, I really need to. You know, like even when people come to my store, I tend to let them just look. And I might, I might say, konnichiwa or arigatou gozaimasu. But you know, like, it tends to be a pretty big city vibe. I let people know that I'm there. But, uh, you know, Japanese customer, I'm not all over them at once because maybe they just want to check things out. You know, so I'm just, uh, that's kind of a normal thing and just feel people out and be quiet. You know, like when it's Japanese society, when in doubt, you know, be quiet is a good idea. So we're going under the highway right now. Under the underpass here. So yeah, but there's also a lot of, like a lot of foreign customers that come by and they, they tend to like a little bit more engagement with me because they, uh, they, they want to hear the experience things, they want to talk about things, they were there observing things about Japanese culture and what have you, and they want to talk about it. Okay, so, I don't know, you can, I, I kind of believe you kind of like, get the world that you make in a way, so, you know, like I tend to be a person who loves to, to be engaging with people, so like I own a shop and a brand, and, or, you know, like I'm in the real estate business because I like investing and stuff like that. So, like, I tended to create the world that I wanted to create. Anyhow, we'll turn up this way. I'll just keep walking around a little bit so we can make a better video. If I were to walk the other way, it's a little bit straighter. But the best way I'll take right now, it might take a few more minutes, but it's a nice walk. Okay, I didn't really plan anything in this video. I'm just trying to think of the things that are, that are really positive about Shibuya. Uh, I really don't like, like some people are like, but the crossing and that's exciting. I always like to take the great pictures there at the crossing and what have you. But yeah, I really like this side of the station. Or like I do because it's fun, but I'm so glad I live on this side of the station. When you take a little walk here, you'll see what I mean. And it's like, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. And these are the highways here. This is 246, which is originally Tamagawa Dori. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was rebuilt into basically uh, a double expressway. And the bottom uh, layer of the road is a free road, traffic lights and what have you. But you see the above road right there? The second layer of that there? That's the freeway system. And that is in the Tokyo ring. So if you enter that system, there's a minimum payment of 1200 yen even if you go to one exit that's standard so you got to be careful when you use it because uh if you get on the tokyo ring let's say once you get on you got to pay 1200 even where you get off and like that's the system it's a little bit rigged but yeah if you have a car in tokyo to drive the uh freeways like that through the center of the city these are really really exhilarating I just love it. Yeah, again, I'm a little nervous because I don't really, I don't drive the freeway much. Uh, but when I do, I feel really excited. But often I'm in the, the car, or I have a Jeep as my main driver, and I'm in the, my Jeep, and my wife and my kids are there. And I'm kind of excited, but I'm also kind of nervous because I don't know the road so well. So I know I got to pay attention. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. Okay, back to the topic at hand here. Uh, things about that are great about Shibuya. Ah, uh, the food. Ah, uh, the food is great here. Uh, but that's just in general in Tokyo. If you're not gonna have like uh, good food, you're out of business. 
I mean, even the burger place across the street, Moss Burger, right over there. If they're not have, if they're not serving good food, I mean, they're out of business. That's just it. Uh, sometimes you could say that the uh, the food that you'd get in the supermarkets here is a little bit uh, inconvenient because what happens is the scale, the the, the way the store, what a beautiful woman, uh, the way the stores stock. We'll turn here. The way that, and you see, as soon as we turn here and get off the main road here, we run to the nice, quiet. This a real. This is, you know, what I mean, I don't know. It's easily in the top five expensive goods in Tokyo, and I'm I'm lucky to own here. But I owned here for years, and I'll just say that when I bought my apartment, man, was it a piece of junk? But I luckily I put uh, together a construction company. Uh, over the uh, in my 30s so when I bought that apartment I could I really basically I did everything I rebuilt the whole thing and it's just a beautiful space and I love it and it's been a great place to raise my family and my wife keeps such a beautiful house there so I just really love living there uh, <laughs> I always forgot what I was talking about but yeah the standard of the food the food is great. The standard, the standard of the service is going to be, but that's just Japanese service in general. Uh, Japanese service is just going to be top notch, just because they just train people to so well. I mean, people are basically taught to respect people from a very young age in the school system. Here you can peer at like a uh, here's a Sunday, and they like you can see we can just peer at their menu. Okay. Looks like they got a 300, 500 little plate, uh, you know, an appetizer plate. But I imagine this place too, it does a lot of wedding business and what have you. They invested a lot. Here's a lunchbox, a 700 yen lunchbox. But look at this restaurant. It's a beautiful restaurant. It's beautiful. I've never been in it. Yeah. This owner here sunk a lot of money into this man. He's more brave than me. I mean, he's got a great restaurant there. But here's just an example of when you get on this side of the... Uh, of the uh, highway here on the nice side of Shibuya, how well maintained the buildings are and the real estate. I mean, obviously, you know, like people have got million dollar apartments here, it's gonna be people who have a million dollar apartments, wanna maintain that million dollar value, and they want a nice place to live. That's the bottom line. And right up here is an interesting place, is the Philippine Embassy. I'm not sure, so I think it might be their old embassy. I was talking to one of the guys here one time. We had a nice little chat. Right out there. And looking down that way, that basically goes Nakamegugo way, but I live this way. And yeah, so that's another good thing that I just came into my eyes here. Is uh, you see this loss in here? There's all kinds of convenience stores here in Shibuya. So uh, really fits really well for a single person who wants to live here but you know it's really interesting about the uh, the demographic statistics in uh, Shibuya Ward or you say in Japanese Shibuya Ku is that the largest demographic right now is young families so and that's put a lot of pressure on the real estate prices because uh, young families they don't want to move to the suburbs now they want to buy the real estate inside the city and you can see that in my building and my wife made a comment about that today because what happened is that they had to put the tape or the like the tape for the parking spots of the bikes because there's been an increase in young mothers and younger families in my building with younger kids and uh, I guess the space has become premium for like the uh, what you say mama chatties or like the, the bicycles for the mothers which they use here in uh, in the center of the city, almost like a motorbike. They have the electronic bike and the mother's cart, the kids everywhere. Sometimes they get going. You gotta be careful when you're driving. Always when you're gonna turn, that you keep an eye out for the electronic bikes because they can, once you get two kids on those bikes and that mother gets going, they can be going up about, you know, 25, 30 kilometers an hour. Now I'm told that the maximum speed of electronic bikes in in uh, Japan is 25 kilometers per hour. 
But what I mean when you're driving your car and you're going to turn, you definitely have to be aware that there could be a family on a bicycle coming up really quickly at a crosswalk where you might not see. And if you turn too quickly and you're not conscious for that. It's funny because even when my wife and I are in here uh, driving around in the center of the city, uh, she's generally always awake and it's like two sets of eyes looking at the road. And even when I'm going to turn, I'm like, I'll say to her, like, is it okay? Are any bikes coming? And then she'll be that that second set of eyes. Just because there's lots of people. That's another thing that can happen. If you're frustrated and you live here in the city, because there's always a lot of people, and if you have a, you, know, you didn't get enough sleep, and you're irritated, or you're tired. And I know, because I used to work, like, I used to work, like, seven days a week. Like, I work still seven days a week, but I'm the owner of my companies now. But I used to work seven days a week uh, for other people's companies, and uh, you know sometimes you get in a, you're in a, just an ugly mood because you're tired, and then you, you always have some friction on the streets and what have you because there's just so many people. Well, you've got to learn to internalize that. You got to learn to be stoic in that way because you can't freak out. You can't get mad, especially as a foreigner, right? You can't get mad at people for. So you have to like you have to just have that samurai in you, which is like take that that pain or that frustration. You got to take it inside of you and uh, to help you make it. So that could be something that I definitely minus, right? So like I said, that uh, one of the things that I really love about the city is that the people love that come here love the juice, right? They love the they love the action, the movement, the vibrancy of of Shibuya Tokyo, right? But then on the other the other end of it is like when you're working hard and I used to work seven days a week and you're running into people all the time, it can be frustrated. Like one time I just came around here, I took my bike and I turned the corner and this guy was jogging and uh, he really scolded me. We just spoke like, and I just wanted to scold him back. But I was just like, Bruce, you live in Shibuya, man. Like I said to myself in your head, I was like, my animal instincts were to scold the guy back or, you know, tell him something. But I just bowed my head. And I thought to myself, Bruce, you chose to live here in Shibuya, right? So there's a lot of people here. And uh, when there's a lot of people, you're going to have like uh, moments of friction like that and in frustration because people are working long hours and, and that here. And uh, it's just going to happen. So you just got that's going to be a big part of your life. Yeah, well, I'm almost home right here. And, and uh, what else is there? Look how nice and clean the streets are here in Shibuya. Everything's really nice. Here's a building next to mine here. Everything really clean. And yeah, here's my building. I made it home. We'll go to the elevator and we'll shut the video off. But I hope this is a, a convenient video for you. I mean, this is probably nothing new, but this is just something that you can expect when you want to live in Shibuya, Tokyo. And you can see here on the left side here, they've got all the mothers. You see all the kids? See, this is a real indication here. Baby seat, baby seat, that's got a baby seat. A baby seat, 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 a baby seat. And there's the queen, my wife. The queen, she's got the best spot. Shibuya Republic right there. She got the best spot for herself. Remind everyone to follow my Instagram, Shibuya Republic with a K. You can follow this channel for lifestyle things and chats about Tokyo or Shibuya Tokyo. I'm the Tokyo Real Estate Man and thank you for tuning into another video today about the pluses and minuses of living in Shibuya Tokyo.